All right, welcome back to Crabby Dice, and let's continue our Trude Vang campaign, and we're off to a side quest. Okay, so uh, after the second um, adventure, if you're following along in my series here, uh, I'm going to try to do my first uh, side quest. All right, so this is actually the sixth scenario or adventure in the book, and it tells you to go read the introduction. So you're gonna have a bunch of these green cards always in your storybook and at the start of the game day you're gonna pick one of them to go on uh, and I chose this one because it's the earliest one I could have actually played this right after adventure one and I should have all right because spoiler warning all right turn it off if you don't want to be spoiled but at the end of chapter two uh, we have to put these dim gates all over the place all right here 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 and here and they spawned a bunch of these uh, exclamation tokens which add extra troops all over the map all right and because the cards are there well no matter which side quest you go on, they're going to appear. All right, if you continue your campaign, they're still going to be there. All right, that's one cool aspect of the game. The map's going to be changing with all these cards. All right, so let's go into that book and read uh, the introduction. All right, so this is an interesting introduction because uh, there's actually no points of interest. Okay, so there's a little uh, blurb over here so that you're taking uh, a rest for the night and you're, uh, I don't know, cooking some food and then a... Uh, <laughs> A old man comes over and then says, can I have some food? Well, then it tells you how to set it up. So you put the adventure sheet, uh, place uh, all heroes in Dranveld. We're going to take the cards for the enemies. We're going to put out a ton of guys that are on the board, plus with those tokens, which add even more guys. All right. And then you have a choice before you even have points of interest. Okay. Share some food with the old man or send the old man away. Well, I'm not a horrible person, I think. So let's uh, let's just feed the the old man and see what happens. So let's go to C15, um, which is going to be on the next page, down over here. So this is a quick one. Uh, you offer him a place near the fire. Uh, he gobbles down his food. Uh, may the gods protect you. He bows his head. So cool. Each hero gets two uh, chronicle points, and then read entry 11. All right, that was quick. All right, here we go. So let's read entry 11. Basically, the old man walks away and then he turns around. Uh, I mean, read the text if you like. Uh, but uh, he ends up saying a speech. Uh, Beware of the cold, blah, blah, blah. And the Snow Queen's reign has begun. All right. So uh, the echoing words die in the wind as the old uh, man staggers away. Okay. So first thing we got to do is we got to go get the world card CS3, Night of the Cold Moon. And it's another of these uh, world cards like we saw in adventure number two. So this is going to trigger um, this is going to trigger at the end of every round, basically in the fifth phase. All right, because we've already put in uh, uh, card 59, which is the fifth phase that we already know about from the previous mission. All right, then we're going to go read entry CS, uh, C6008. But before we do that, uh, we do need to trigger this card all right, because this icon means when it comes into play or at the start of the mission if it was in your world story area but it's going to trigger right away so it says place one plus uh, blue uh, attack on all garm and word garm enemy cards and points of interest well there's no points of interest on the map right now but we do have a garm card it's right over here so we're going to go grab one of those tokens which i have right over here so it's the same one focus 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 there you go that's the attack one Let's put on this. So right now the Garms are three attack instead of the usual two. Okay, so that's what happened there. All right, and then at the end of the round here, just as a reminder, if a Garm or War Garm was defeated this round, a hero can spend two Chronicle points to replace this card with 143. Well, what's 143? Well, we'll figure that out in the future. All right, let's put that there. Okay, so next let's go read section 008 which is over here um so here we're we're just walking i guess and uh, in the woods you hear the snapping of twigs it's a lady running towards you she's being attacked or being chased and uh they're not she's not being chased by regular garms they're war garms so uh they transform into the beast place two elite garms in your region so i got them right over here so we didn't even start the mission yet and already we're getting attacked by war arms. Now I believe because this token is here, we're actually going to face off against three elite war arms. And then it says, uh, reveal point of interest J, All right, which I've already gone ahead and done. All right, it's this one over here. 
Ta-da! So we're off against the Warg Arms and Dranvelt and they're uh, 6 health, 2 attack and they do a bunch of uh, stuff with their uh, their symbols. Alright, and now we're actually going to start the game. Okay, because all that was the pre-introduction stuff. So we're going to travel, we're not going anywhere, and then we're going to engage. Let's take on these uh, Warg Arms and see if we can take them out. We're probably going to need a couple of rounds to take out 3 of them though. Alright, so let's start the battle with Kali. Actually, one thing before we start, I did forget to mention that the Wargarm also gets this token. The Hourglass on the top doesn't just mean at the start of a, the mission or whenever you get this card. It's also whenever cards come into the system, whether it be story cards, uh, points of interest, anything, uh, you're going to add it also. So this is a Wargarm, like the card says, so we're going to add an extra attack. So these things actually have uh, 6 health and 3 attack. Alright, so... Let's start here with Catley. I don't think I shuffled her deck since last mission. So we... one, two, three, four. And a battle, just as per usual, you draw four of these feet cards, and then you're gonna draw three tokens from the bag uh, until you wanna stop pushing your luck. All right, so let's grab our bag. Let's grab three tokens, one, two, and three. And look at, <laughs> first draw of the match. Okay, I think, Maybe this is how this mission is going to go. I don't know, but I don't think I have a choice. I think I'm going to exhaust my character. All right, throw these back into the bag. And we're going to try again. All right, let's give it a good, better shuffle this time. Let's spin the bag around a couple times. And now we're going to draw three again. One, two, three. And look at that. So much better. Just one darkness. All right, so let's start with that. All right, then we got a couple of intel. Let me just look at my cards quick, quick. So I have a uh, gain two uh chronicle points which is very useful to take this thing out right because i need to give up two chronicle points at the end of the round uh this is five damage uh, so these two together is good because this is a skill and this gives me extra damage on a skill uh this is just a, an attack that's eh, okay uh, and i'm gonna need defense so i think i'm gonna focus on these three cards so for sure this one's gonna go here and then this one let's put over <sighs> let's go over here Let's do that. All right. Or do I want to do two defense twice? You know what? If I get fire, no, I'm not going to get fire twice. Let's just do that. All right, let's try again. One, two, three. And remember, you're doing this all together with all the characters. I'm playing two handed, so I'm going to do this one at a time. But logically, if you're all pulling tokens at the same time, you can all see who's going to be good at defense, who's going to be good at attacking. So I got my fire. Um, I got Charisma, which is no choice to go here. And I got my Fire. I think I'm going to put it here. All right, so those two are already comboing together. I got that down. Uh, we're good. So let's push our luck one more time. Uh, let's see if we can get some green. And we got two black and a green. But one green does not help us. Uh, we're going to go here. And do I go again? Try to get super duper lucky. I mean, I'm going to end up losing two health, but this thing can make me save myself from three damage. So you know what? Let's, uh, let's do it. Let's just push our luck the whole way. All right. So there you go. That was what I was expecting uh, all the way to the end. I got a fire and I got a, a leaf. All right. So I'm going to stop it here for Catley. Let's go to our rogue who's going to draw from the back. All right. So let's shuffle our deck. I don't think I shuffled it since the end of the last mission. Three, four. Let's see, we got Shadow Step, my favorite skill. All right, this is awesome. Uh, but I'm going to have to be exhausted for that to come into play. This allows me to do six damage if I'm exhausted uh, fast. So I can get to kill one of those things before they even get to activate, which would be amazing. All right, so let's see what we're going to get. One, two, three. Darkness. Uh, let's put that for sure on Shadow Step. And let's put Fire on... Let's see, energy, this deals plus three. So I don't even need to be exhausted. If I can get plus three with this fast, uh, that can kill a Garm. So yeah, let's do that. Let's put it here. Uh, let's draw three more. One, two, three. Uh, oh boy. So this has no choice to go there. And I got a couple of agility. Uh, so let's go one here for sure so I can activate Shadow Step. And let's put one over here so I can gain my, my defense. Right, let's pull one more time. Now, if I can get two fires and a leaf, that would be amazing. <laughs> nope, <laughs> that's not going to work. I got two darkness. 
All right, but I did get a fire. So where do I want to put this? I think this is going to be probably the best bet right there so I can get my combo off. Do I push my luck one more time? No, I think I'm good. I think this is probably a good place to stay packed um, because I feel like I'm going to need my Chronicle points uh, to do the, uh, that extra damage. All right, so let's call it a day right now. Although I do need my defense. You know what? Yeah, let's pull one more time. I need my defense or else I'm just going to end up taking three damage like uh, Catley is going to do. So let's do one, two, three. Oh, the perfect draw. This is unbelievable. So green, red, and I stay in the black area. Perfect. I'm activating everything, which is amazing. All right, so that was the preparation step. So remember, during battle, just as a quick resume, uh, there's the preparation step, which is the Quacks the Quellingberg uh, bag building, uh, matching the icons. Uh, then you're going to go into resolution, where you just go through the, the script to resolve your stuff. So first thing is, uh, if you have skills or fast stuff, you go before the enemy. Right, we're definitely going to take, take advantage of that. Uh, so we're going to do, this is three damage, fast. All right, just to show you with a quick, so fast three. If exhausted, deal plus three. I'm not exhausted, so that's not going to come into play. And then I'm going to do this as well, which is plus three to an attack. And I can refresh myself for one C, but I'm not exhausted. So uh, let's do that. So that's straight up six damage. Now, these things don't have armor, and they have six life. So I'm, boom, I'm going to kill one right off the bat. All right, let's take care of this one. All right, now I don't have a, uh, I don't have anything fast or any skills to activate, so they're gonna go. Okay, so they're gonna attack me. Now they're gonna get uh, two different attacks. I'm gonna have one of them attack each of my characters. Oh, and by the way, both my characters didn't activate anything here. Actually, uh, Kali is gonna lose two life before she even does anything, because she, remember, she was in the red section. All right, but I'll take care of that after. All right, so now they're both gonna attack me, so let's go. Let's shuffle this attack deck. All right, and let's see. So the first one, let's attack uh, Bria with it, and it's a minus two with an N. All right, so it's going to be an attack of three minus two. Uh, well, might as well block it. Well, it's only one damage. Uh, sure. Let's just block it. Because I will end up losing one life because over here, the N is lose one life for every red status effect you have. I believe this one always counts on your board, so I'm going to lose one life. All right, I'm going to have the other one attack Catley. All right, so here we go with her. So remember, I did lose the two life because I stopped on the red section. So I triggered all the red stuff on the status track. All right, so she starts at nine. She's down to seven. And now she's going to suffer a... All right, the minus one, so it's going to be three minus one is two. I'm going to block the two with the mud wall. Uh, but uh, I'm going to lose a life. It's the same N as before. So I'm going to lose a life for every red, so it's going to make me lose another one. All right, already losing three life at the start. That's never a good thing. Um, so there you go. So that was the enemy's attack. Now we're going to attack back. So the first thing I'm going to do is, actually, I did forget to activate this, which is a, a skill gain two. Uh, chronicle points. There you go. Just in that one, two. Um, after that, I'm just going to trigger this the Vinter Blast 2. So this is going to be five damage, but I activate a skill, which this was a skill. It's written skill right below it. So this one's going to be six damage and a Chronicle point. Boom. All right, so tap it. So six damage. Guess what? That's enough to kill one. Get another one and gone. All right, and uh, that's gonna be it for her. She's pretty much tapped out, unless I have to do a damage uh, by itself, but I'll come back. All right, actually a small change of plans. What I'm gonna do is I was gonna do uh, two damage with assassination on the same Garm that the wizard destroyed because uh, this card here has an effect. Uh, that if the target is defeated, gain two uh, Chronicle points. All right, because two points would not kill that thing. So it would just be two damage on the Garm. So if I go attack him next turn, whether it has two damage or full health, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I'm going to have done two damage to this thing, then kill it with the Wizard. Then this would trigger and give me two Chronicle points. 
All right, sorry, did that a bit out of order and that's it. So there you go, that's the end of the engage step. Uh, there's one garm still in my space. Uh, so we're gonna go to the explore step. There's nothing to explore because there's a guy in my space. Uh, then we're gonna go to the world step. So now the world step, all right? Uh, it's if a garm or war garm was defeated, which it was uh, this round, one hero may lose two chronicle points to replace this card with CS 143. All right, so let's do it. So I'm gonna lose, uh, let's say two from Bria's board. All right, and let's go get card 143. All right, here we go with card uh, 143. So it's gonna be place an attack and a defense on all Garm and War Garm enemies uh, and points of interest. Now, I believe, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but they already have the attack token from the previous card. I believe you only add the defense card. Correct, I'm pretty sure that's how it works because once you pay the four and remove this card, I think all these icons go away. It would only make sense because this is not a world card anymore, so these icons shouldn't be out there. So let's just add the defense one out. But again, if I'm playing that wrong and making life easier on myself, uh, let me know. So let's do that. So now this thing has three attack and one armor slash defense. All right, I'm just going to put this out here as a reminder. Actually, I'll put the old card right below it like that. Uh, so there you go. So that was the world step. We're going to go jump back to the top to round two. All right, we're going to go move. We're not going to move and engage. And we're going to try to kill this thing out and then get rid of that in the second round. All right, let's make this a quick battle. So I've already gone ahead and done uh, the wizard's turn. So we're just going to end up activating these two cards. And these ones are not full. Uh, so I ended up in the blue section. Just so I don't forget, I'm going to give myself the chronicle point now. All right, I performed the preparation for Bria. Again, we're going to activate these two cards and not, not these two. Uh, so I stopped super early because we're gonna have enough damage to to kill this thing outright And I got a defensive card, which is plus uh, three for whatever uh, he's gonna attack us with All right, so I'm gonna give myself the chronicle points. So I don't forget uh, And there you go. So we don't have any faster skills to activate So we're gonna suffer the first attack from the uh, Garm and see what it is. Obviously, I'm gonna pick uh, uh, Bria because she has the only defensive card. So it looks like it's gonna be a zero So it's gonna be just three from the card because it's a plus one from this so I'll block all three. Um, so that's fine. Now it says if I blocked all of it, my next attack does plus an, an attack does plus two damage. So this thing is an attack seven. All right, just FYI, just gonna put this as a reminder. Uh, but it does have a symbol actually. It has the circle, and the circle means gain a negative heart status effect. Oh man, let's grab that from the side of the board, and let's slide that into our uh, slot here. All right, so let's discard this. All right, we're pretty much done. Let's just attack back. Uh, you know what, I don't even have to, have to activate uh, my wizard at all. Uh, he's just gonna activate this, deal seven damage straight into there. He has a defense, that's fine. Six goes through, he has six life. So he's gonna die straight up with one attack. All right, and that's it. All right, so the battle is over. Uh, we're gonna go do the uh, points of interest, actually. My wizard did get uh, hurt. So she's going to spend a Chronicle point to gain a, a two life. So that was the, uh, the actually, wait, before we do that, before we even do that, let's actually get rid of this. All right, and let's go read the book. All right, let's go do things in the correct order. Uh, so this is Defeat and Interact uh, with C6006. Uh, yeah, let's go see. All right, so, you know, pause if you actually want to read the whole story. But quick resume here. Uh, basically, she's happy that you so you protected her. Uh, she thanks you. Then she tells you this whole backstory about how she got married uh, to this dude, and then her father died, and the guy got into all kinds of weird uh, stuff. Uh, so we need to go to her town and see what's going on. And there you go. So it says reveal points of interest A. All right, let's go to our point of interest board. Probably my favorite mechanism in this game. All right, and we're gonna go see the town of. Tarf Haven. Uh, it says a small but rich land ruled by the lords of the lords of the bull. They are faithful subjects of the Jarl of Stormhaven. All right, so we got to go all the way to Edgelad. So where's token A? It's gonna go all the way over here. Um, all right, so now we're not quite done. Now we're gonna activate the, the city that we're in. So. Uh, I mean, Bria could do it. She's down, but you know what? She's going to do it. That's fine. She's going to use one Chronicle point to gain two life, but she's only missing one. And uh, the wizard's also going to do it. 
Uh, but then, okay, now we're done the explore phase. All right, so we're gonna take care of this. All right, so we're gonna look at Cadley because she's gonna pay for it, but we're gonna trigger this, which is the fifth step of a phase. Um, so it says if a Garma war garm was defeated this round, which we just killed the elite one, one hero may lose four chronicle points to remove this card from the game. All right, so let's do it. One, two, three, four, and boom. This card's gone. We're going to chuck it outside. Now, I believe you still remove these tokens from everywhere. So these Garm are just going to end up being regular Garms from now on. All right. Um, and that's it. These guys, these guys I'll put back in the card box later. All right. So that's going to be the end of the round. Um, all right. So now we're going to start from the top. So travel, uh, then engage, then explore. Uh, where do we want to travel? Obviously, the only place we can go. <laughs> we have to go this way to the point of interest A. I mean, I can go fight these things, but I'm really going to get nothing out of it. Remember, in side missions, you do not get experience points. So there's no point going around and getting into battles just to get XP. Uh, so let's go straight to our objective. So let's go to the right, Ice Peak Mountains. Let's do engage. There's no enemies there, so we're going to do an event. Let's flip it over. Oh, looks like an intelligence one. So it says each hero must perform an intelligence three test. Uh, each hero that succeeds gets a wild and each hero that fails discards a blue status effect. Now, before I even start, Bri is going to auto fail, all right? She doesn't even have any of these tokens. So let's just pass whatever she's going to do. Now I am actually going to try with the wizard because she has four intel in her bag. And let's see if we can get that magical wild token in our bag. All right, so let me just put this here. Let me find her bag. All right, here we go. Let's give this a shot. Draw seven tokens. One, two. It doesn't look like we're going to get it. I didn't even get one. Yeah, we auto failed. I didn't even get one measly token. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got one. So that's a fail. Uh, so the failure, remember, is still to lose a blue token. I don't have any. Uh, so that's fine. All right, let's just discard this. I like to discard it under the deck. All right, uh, so we're done. There's nothing to explore on the step. Step. So and there's no world uh, to take care of because we took care of the uh, the effect. Uh, so that's it. It's the end of the round. Let's go to the next round. Travel. Uh, sure. Let's go down to A. Uh, engage. No enemies. So another event is going to come up. <laughs> it looks like it's the other uh, intelligence check. So. Uh, oh man, I've gotten this card every single mission. So this is the one where um, you need to do an Intel 2 check. Uh, again, the rogue is going to auto fail. So it's going to be gain a minus one red charisma. Which is going to be kind of annoying. So I'm going to go put that on her board. All right, but remember, I play with a house rule. You don't have to play this rule. But if I have 2x the amount of tokens in the bag, just so I can make the game move along and not have to spend time doing checks that I don't really want to do. Uh, I auto gain the benefit on the left. Uh, so because the wizard has four, I'm going to say that she passes. Uh, so she's going to gain uh, two hearts. But remember, this is a house rule. You don't have to play this rule. So she's going to gain two. She only has needs one. There you go. She's back to full life. And again, we'll discard this to the bottom of the deck. Okay. So that was it for the engage steps. Go explore which is the, the town. All right, so it says go read C6016. All right, so here we go at 16. It says the following day you reach a hill overlooking the, the city, uh, lets you scout the uh, area. The village is protected by tall palisades, uh, appears to be empty. Light, sh light shines from the longhouse. Uh, so she's happy to be there. She says, my family sigil, we must discover what has happened to my people. Uh, it's clear that the answer to the question lay inside the longhouse. You must find a way inside. All right, so discard point of interest A. All right, that was quick. That's gone. Um, then if I have a bard, which I don't, do something. So let's skip that. If I have a rogue, oh, I do. Uh, then I can perform a strength test uh, to try to sneak inside the night. All right, so let's try that, so let that test. All right, let's get my green bag. All right, so we need to get three strength, which is gonna be really hard to do, uh, but let's try. So seven tokens, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna have to get lucky. Oh, I did it. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's amazing. All right, let's go read the entry. And I'm lucky because he was the uh, 
he has the title that gives him an extra token. So I have four strength in my bag, which is awesome. Uh, so if they succeed, go read entry 002. Uh, here we go. Oh boy, long text. All right, so the, I mean, pause if you want to read, but uh, basically you break in silently uh, and you go to a bed. You're about to kill someone, but <laughs> it says, please don't kill me. Uh, so the woman is uh, the aide of uh, Lena. So she goes, uh, the aide. Uh, so she tells you about the, the guy and he took all the people to the Troll Ridge Mountains and he's a horrible, despicable person. So you ask, where's this place? Uh, so he's, she's like, uh, it's in the uh, Troll Ridge Mountains, uh, but don't use the main entrance uh, because it's heavily guarded. Uh, use a secret entrance. So you leave, uh, you go tell Lena, I know where that place is and uh, what he wants there. Uh, it's been, it's, ah, it has been exhausted for years. Exhausted or not, you must reach it as you want to help the villagers. So reveal point of interest F. All right, I'm guessing this is going to be the Troll Ridge Mountains. All right, there you go. Ancient mine, an ancient mine in the mountains, probably uh, of dwarven origin. You wonder why Orvar and his men have ventured there. So let's go get token F. Into the Troll Ridge Mountains. All right, that's pretty much the end of the round. <laughs> There's not much else to do. Let me just put these tokens away. Uh, so let's go start the next round. Uh, so it's the start is going to be obviously travel. Let's go travel our party over here. We're going to engage. Let's go read the next card. And what is this now? This is a agility two test. All right, so it says, um, all right, so each hero in the party must perform an agility two test. All right, now this is going to be super simple. Uh, I'm going to auto succeed with the rogue because she has actually five agility in her bag. So she's going to discard a red token, which is going to be awesome because she has two. So I'll decide which one she wants to discard. And you know what? For my rogue, uh, wizard, I'm going to make her auto fail. Uh, but she has no blue things to get rid of. She has no tokens on her track. So this is completely useless for her. So we're done with the event. Uh, up next is the explorer. And let's go read entry F, which is number four all right so let's go to four it says the main entrance is guarded by soldiers but thanks to Ada's suggestion you find the old shaft boarded over with rotten planks they pry off quietly enough and you slip inside so uh, go read 17 but we also have to discard uh, f so let's get rid of that all right, let's go to 17 all right 17 is quite a bit of text so feel free to pause and read if you like but basically we venture deep and deep into the mountains and it gets super duper cold and then you notice that there's all these slaves they're they're trying to break some ice and then they find they eventually do break through the rocks right not the ice and then they find black ice underneath all the rock uh so the ice is the source of why it's so cold in that and that mountain basically all right so ba well, one of them says good uh basically the he says that's where the two cleavers said it would be um so on and so on uh, so let's just keep going. All right, basically the man is uh, Ovar is the man in the shadows. Uh, uh, this is surely the war garden chief. He steps into the light. You notice the distinctive face and axe. You mark him anywhere. In the meantime, two warriors have grabbed a slave and are hauling him to the Ovar beside the pillar of ice. Ovar raises his axe and takes uh, aim to behead the hapless man. All right, so let's see our choices here. So if our party has the black crystal, which we do, and there is a dim walker, uh, uh, no, we don't have a dim walker, uh, uh, or a Wintner Weaver in the party, which we do, we can perform an intelligence three test. All right, test, uh, see, we can use it to shatter the pillar of ice. Um, so do I want to do that? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, so. Uh, let's go do the intelligence check. All right, so let's try that test. So we need to get three intelligence. She's got four in her bag. Let's see if we can get it. So we got one. So one, two, three. Four, five. Okay, one more out of two. Let's pull them one at a time. One. Uh oh. Come on, come on, come on. Two. Ah, we failed. So uh, that's seven. So we didn't get enough. Let's put that back in the bag. So what happens if we fail? Let's go back. Uh, fail, fail, fail. Uh, continue reading. All right, so we go to the war section. If we have a warrior, 
uh, which we don't have, so we can't do this charisma test. All right, so never mind. And then fight the war arms. All right, so we need to again place two elite war arms. Uh, one, two. Here you go. Uh, in our space, uh, reveal point of interest B uh, and add one of uh, these threat tokens in the region if the party has quest token one. Well, we don't have quest token one. I wonder how you get it. Who knows? Uh, so we got to get point of interest B. Let's do that. Boom. And obviously, those are the war arms that we just uh, uh, are facing off against right there. Are they the exact same stats as these ones? Let's see, 6, 2. And these two uh, abilities, uh, yeah, they look exactly the same. All right, so it looks like we're going to fight two more of these. All right, let's see if we can take them down. All right, so let's do the preparation step with Bria first of my first two characters. So one, two, three. Uh, looks like uh, char Charisma. Uh, oh, I got my Shadow Step, my favorite skill in her deck. So let's go definitely there. And then let's do the plus over here. So these two, remember, just like at the beginning of the mission, my favorite two cards, whenever they're together, I give plus three to fast, deal six damage right away to kill a Garm, uh, War Garm. So one, two, three, let's pull again. Uh, looks like I got one darkness. Uh, looks like I got intelligence, which has to go over here. And a fire, which I am going to definitely play over here, right? Because on my next pull, if I get a agility, I can put it right there. So let's go three again. One, two, three three let's see what we got looks like darkness looks like fire oh my god amazing so this is everything's gonna trigger except my defense although oh man although you know what let me actually place this here so i get defense and i'll place this here uh to get the uh, the attack so she's gonna pass you know so i don't forget let me gain the chronicle point now uh, in the resolution step. Let me do the exact same thing for actually you know what? I'm not gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make this super quick uh, because we already know what's gonna happen uh, When during the uh, resolution step this is gonna be super quick. I'm gonna do a fast attack So three damage plus three now these war arms have six life. So that's gonna kill this one straight up All right All right um, and then this guy is gonna attack me first. Uh, so let's go to the attack deck. Let's go flip over the first card. So it looks like a straight up zero. So it's gonna be zero plus two, which is just two. And I'm gonna tap this to absorb it. Um, while he's left, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go do the wizard's turn as if she was doing a resolution and it'll probably be enough to kill this guy. All right, for... Um, just the resolution step for my wizard. She's only going to activate two cards. Um, so this one is going to be uh, five damage. Uh, sorry, six damage because this is a skill uh, because of the uh, the text here. So remember, I gain a uh, charisma point, uh, chronicle point as well. So six damage straight into the war garment. Only has six life. Plus, I have this skill that gives it an extra plus two. So that's eight damage uh, right there. That'll kill him off. And there you go. So that's the... Uh, uh the end of that by the way when we started this battle it's obviously the start of the next round because it was the explore world and then you're gonna go to the next one which is travel engage uh now we've engaged we're gonna go back to the explore step so uh let's go to the war arms here which is read entry uh number 10. all right so you read 10 here you go pause if you want to read it but basically she thanks you you kill the guy he runs uh the head guy runs away actually um so uh, she actually is impressed she gives you a reward which is the sigil i believe uh, or an amulet uh, so somebody in the party is going to get cs20 uh, so you're going to go grab that card and it's the uh, obviously a bullhead <laughs> so two chronicle points to gain two life that's not bad it's good to give to a tank i don't have a tank in my party but i'll give it to somebody um and then it says read the end. So that was a super quick mission. I mean, it was like three battles and that's about it. So we're pretty much done. So you thank Lila for her kindness. I must lead my people back to their home, she says. In the meantime, you uh, might warn the Jarl of Storm Haven about Uvar and his mysterious ice cult. If anyone uh, can put an end to it, it's him. Uh, you agree with her, the Jarl must be told. So each person gets a uh, an XP 
All right, cool. Uh, and then lock side quest 42, the ice cult. So I'm going to go get that card. I'm going to slide it into my storybook section. And But most importantly, that's the end of this uh, pretty simple mission, actually. This is really short. Uh, so we'll see you in the next one.